Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back. We're playing Rashid from Afghanistan. Pretty cool. Okay, E4. Yeah, I figured. I figured. I, I would be scared of C6 too. Okay. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I'm... <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, we're playing Moss Day from Israel. All right, let's see how we do. I just won the previous game, not that last one, but like two games before from somebody abandoning. And I just won that from a resignation. Um, I'm pretty sure he could have abandoned that game and it would have just counted as um, an abort. That's kind of funny. I basically just got 16 elo for nothing. Kind of funny. Okay, we're just going to play the London system here. Early D6. Probably planning like bishop f5 or something. I'm almost tempted to just play bishop f3 just to prevent him from playing f5. Did I say f3? I meant d3. Excuse me. My dyslexia kicks in again. Moss day. Fully expecting bishop f5 here. Let's see though. Was Rashid a good sport? Yeah, Rashid was a great sport. Oh. He was an awesome sport. He saw c6 and he was like, nope. Interesting. That is an interesting move. This opens up bishop f5 for the pin. Huh. That is a really interesting idea. I mean, I'm so tempted to play that. You guys have no idea. So he'll kick with the pawn, then I can just fall back a4. And I can play c3 and always just get the bishop back if needed. It seems kind of like a waste of time. But man, the pin here. But... Well, that knight's not going anywhere. His other knight may try to come out here to e4. So I'm just going to play bishop d3. I've never seen anyone play this before. This is very new to me. You want to go for the trade skis? <clears throat> I'm losing this trade if I initiate. <clears throat> I really don't want to initiate. I can always pin the knight. I'd rather keep a pawn on d4. He might push up. Well, he can't really 
No, he can't push up. I could, if he pushes up e4, I can just take that pawn since his knight is pinned. <clears throat> it makes knight f3 a little bit difficult. If he pushes up, he technically has the fork, but not really. I kind of just want to get rid of this knight already. I don't think this knight's going to get any better. And it puts his bishop on a bad square. Just going to go for it. I'll probably play c3 next. This also prevents any pawn e4 moves. It ends up taking with a knight. It's really interesting. Kind of want to play uh, c3. <laughs> yeah, this makes knight e5 impossible for me. So... Yeah, I can't play knight f3 anymore because now he does have the fork. Which is kind of annoying. Knight, knight d2. Perhaps. <clears throat> you can't, can't, can't go knight f3 anymore. So much for my London system. No. I can't go e2 because then he pushes e4. And then I'm forced to put my light square bishop on some squares that I don't really want to go to. Maybe that's not the end of the world though. I think c4 is actually a better idea here. So I can fall back. Actually, I'm going to play c3 just to give the light square bishop a place to fall back to on c2. I actually think that's the play here. Yeah. This might be the highest rated, highest rated opponent I've played. I think maybe I played someone, what was it, on Saturday? That was like either 893 or something like that, or eight, maybe 892. But I remember we got him, no, he was a bit higher. He was 895, because I remember we got him to 903 after the loss. I think at this point, knight e2 is viable. Yeah, his dark square bishop's having a hard time back there on e7. He's kind of strangulated it. I mean... I can either trade that off or just block or just ignore it. I don't really want to ignore it. I think I'd rather just defend it with a knight. I think I'd rather just defend it with a knight and castle. I don't really want to trade off the light square bishop. I feel like it's better here. Yeah, his queen is very stuck. So... I think I'll just develop and block that. If he wants to trade, so be it. I don't think he's going to trade for it, though. I'll probably push push uh, h3 next. So my knight is pinned. I need to keep that in mind. I may just play h3 before castling.
He still hasn't taken d4, which is interesting. I'm willing to bet if I go h3, he'll probably fall back to h5. Then at that point, I'll probably castle. Hmm. Um, that's fine. I actually don't think that's a great move. Um, just my two cents. But maybe I'm wrong here because I can get the knight out, and after I go bishop c2 it's going to be an even trade i'm just going to fall back here okay hmm. d5 is actually pretty good now i can't really uh plant my knight on e4 the b knight Pretty sure he's gonna go g5. Excuse me, h5, whatever. Sides to go there, huh? And what sucks here is that I really wanna get my queen out onto g4 to try to uh, harass g7, but it's not happening. I'm really tempted to trade the light square bishop off on a4. I wish c4 was an idea here. Hmm. I'll just castle. I think I have to push c4 and try to break open d5 at some point. Yeah, he has two very weak pawns. Probably queen b3 at some point is an order. I mean, if he wants to go for that, that's almost okay. I can pin his bishop here. I think I'm just going to pin his bishop and just go for the recapture. He'll probably protect with his queen, but then I think it gets his queen into a bad spot. I think the queen on b5 is not like a very natural place for the queen. He he could push a6 and try to open up the file for his rook as well. I think more than anything, we're probably going to see queen d7. If he goes queen d7, I'll take kill recapture on queen b5. I'll probably go queen b3, offer the queen trade, and try to open up the file for my rook instead. That's my plan, at least. I'm sticking with it. Best case scenario, he protects with the pawn, the c pawn. I don't think he would do that, though. He's playing pretty well. So I don't, I don't see that happening. But I think second best case scenario for us is he goes queen d7 to protect. I think worst case scenario for us, he pushes the a pawn and opens up the file for his rook. But I think the trade's in order here, though. It's a bit of a bummer because. My pawns are on dark squares. I'm kind of foregoing that. But, oh well. That was the worst case scenario for us. <laughs> uh, 
just going to go for it. Yeah, I have queen b3 now. He'll have to protect that with a pawn. And he's really going to lock himself in here. I'll go queen b3. It's almost guaranteed that he'll push the c pawn. Or just bring his queen out to d7 here. He hasn't castled, so I have to go after these pawns at some point. Okay. I think I may just want to try to break open on f3 here. So... I think what I'll do is bring the queen, uh, the knight out to d2, push f3, and then I can just recapture with the knight here. I have to put a weakness like in this pawn chain, I think. And he hasn't castled, so I have to start breaking open the center. And I think the way to do that is by breaking open e4. Let's my rook breathe as well. Yeah. I'm just going to push F3. I don't know. It just seems like the right thing to do. Maybe I'm going to regret this, but we'll see. So he has a dark square bishop, and I have a knight. Okay, I think we're making progress here. He has this fork next, so I have to keep uh, d2 protected. I kind of almost have to just trade these off. I don't quite want to give up the A rook here, since his rook is on an open file. And if I move to uh, rook D1, the only thing protecting the queen, uh, the A2 pawn is going to be the queen. So I'm going to be a bit locked in moving her around. So I'm actually just going to go D1. And then offer the trade here on D2 with the knights. Maybe I should have just moved in my... Maybe I should have just brought the queen back to c2, actually. Maybe that was a bit, bit of a mistake. Maybe having the rook there on the f-file was better. Yeah, I think that was a bit of a blunder. 
Yeah, I'm calling Blunder on that one. That puts a Rook on kind of a bad square, D2. Yeah, a bit of a regret on that one. Hmm. Queen C2 was better. Yeah, queen c2. I have to be worried about bishop h4. It's quite the move. I don't understand that one. Do I want to bring the knight out here? Mm. I think I do. I wish I would have went queen c2. I think queen c2 was better instead of rook d1. Yeah, I'm regretting rook d1. Hmm. Yeah, it's a bit rough. Yeah, see, what sucks here is that... Yeah, I think I might still actually just want to go... I think I might still just go queen c2. For the reason of bringing the rook back. No. Ah, yeah, I've kind of screwed this up a bit. I think I have to go for this trade now. This is going to be really hard to break through. Hmm. Yeah, see, the thing is here now, after his pawn goes, I... Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. I do have this really nasty square here with the knight, and I can block in. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. E6 is a really nasty square. He'll notice it. I, I guarantee he's going to notice it. He's been playing really well, so I'd be shocked if he doesn't see this coming. Tactics, though. Yeah, a thousand percent guarantee he's going to see this. He'll probably move his queen up, I'm willing to bet. I kind of want to push uh, pawn a3 so I can get my queen out and the rooks uh, out. I think that makes, kind of creates like a backwards pawn here, but isn't a backwards pawn sort of on a starting square kind of okay-ish? Yeah, so he does see that, yeah. I was expecting that.
He's going to have a really strong center if I take his knight. That's why I really don't want to go for it. I want to go back queen c2 so I can protect this knight. And just get the rook back out here. Yeah, I lost um some tempo when I did rook d1. But he did see that move, which was which was expected. I need to get my queen like over to this side of the board. It's really bad right now. I'm just gonna go queen c2. I've been wanting to play it for a while, so I'm just gonna do it already. I'm not gonna be surprised if we see something like pawn g5 here. It's gonna force the knight back. I'm only playing queen c2 so I can play rook f1. Hmm. A knight for a bishop. I don't want to play <clears throat> this too hastily. There is always moving back and then coming over here. It is an option. I'm not even going to think. I'm just going to play whatever feels right. I think g5 is honestly his best bet. Forces the knight back to a bad spot. My king is much worse off here though. I'll probably recapture with the rook if he ends up taking the knight here. Kind of wouldn't be surprised if he doubles up his queen with the rook on the f file, though. I mean, knight e6 would have been a sick move. You have to decide what's best here. The rook or the pawn? Maybe the pawn is better. No, I mean, I have the open file for the rook already. I don't know what's better. The rook or the pawn? I really don't know if it's worth it bringing the pawn back over here. I don't think it's going to add much protection to the king, although he will be able to bring a lot of stuff down the f file here, probably more than me. So can it be that bad? This pawn is a bit backwards at the moment, too. There's nothing protecting it, so getting rid of his dark square bishop. Hmm. I'm gonna figure out what's more valuable here. The central pawn or getting it back on the F file.
I don't know why. For some reason, it just seems like the right move. Could be sorely mistaken, though. Ideas, ideas, ideas. I think he's debating about the night. I think it's better for him to take my night. Like, it's better for me if he takes the night. Because he can potentially create this pass pawn threat here. If I take his night. So I need to be really careful about that. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that at the moment. Yeah, I don't want this pass pawn threat. He's going to be winning this pawn if I take it here. Because uh, he'll have two attackers on this pawn, so he'll just trade off and win a pawn there. So I have to create some other threat. Maybe a3 at this point and try to move the rook over or something. Knight f3, knight e5 seems really strong. I'm just trying to figure out what harm he can do with the knight after he moves. He has this knight g3, which is strong. Threatens the rook, so I'd have to move up a little bit. I think I'm just going to go for it. I'm, I'm going to try to get this knight. Oh, I just lost the pawn. Ooh, I just hung that pawn. That's a bit rough. I failed to notice that. That's stupid. This might be a win on time kind of game though. Yeah, having this knight and this pawn here, it's a bit of a bummer. He doesn't quite have mate. I mean, I can still come back here and threaten things. I think you can still play this move, it's just not as strong anymore. He forced to move his queen around a little bit. Hmm. I may have just blundered that. Yeah, I shouldn't have removed the defender from that pawn. Hmm. I wonder if almost like e1 is the play. No, I don't want to go e1. Let's try it. This locks his queen from going, moving backwards. Yeah, that was a blunder. I kind of failed to see that. I think I have to go h2. He has the check here, so. Unfortunately, my stuff's pretty well defended. Hmm. I can always offer the trade here. Hmm. I'd rather offer the trade, I think. I 
F2. I'm going to offer the trade. Oh wait, that's stupid. That just hangs a that just hangs a queen. Oh wow, he should have taken that with a knight. Yeah, I blundered that. He could have just taken with a knight and then dipped. Oh, that was kind of a blunder from both of us. I I, I really messed that up. They just play fast here at this point. Man, I really messed that up. <laughs> That's really dumb. Yeah, he's going to have a lot of threats here soon. Dang. Why didn't I take with the king there to begin with? Oh no, I couldn't. I couldn't. Duh. Uh, okay, so he moves this. Uh, I'm just going to... Hmm. When in doubt, move towards the center, maybe. Yeah, I had this uh, attack here. It's not going to work anymore. I don't want to go there. Just gonna make moves. Yeah. Removing the defender from that pawn. Bit of a mistake. I'm gonna try to win on time. He has an extra pawn, but his pawns are stacked. I think, honestly, it's in his best interest to just get rid of this pawn. So I can push the other ones. Yeah, well, that changes things. It would be funny if I won on time. This would be very poetic. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I think his best bet is to move this one since he can at least re recapture here. It's not over. I have to convert this with one pawn somehow. I want to move towards the center, but at the same time, I don't. Just because of this. My king is up like two more squares. I wonder if it's worth it to just try to trade the rooks off here. I don't think it is. Worried about his rook getting out here on the seventh rank. He has a check and he's going to win some pieces there.
I think I can win with the king. Yeah, I can at least win this pawn. My king is just further up. I think I'm going to be able to do more. Actually, it's not looking good. I'm cut off here. I need to uncut myself off here. Let's think about this. He's going to be winning on the king side here. He's going to promote faster than me. I can already tell. This one pawn is really valuable. I think that was a really good move here. He gets en passant there. Yeah, I think he's winning. Wouldn't be surprised if he pushes a king up here. Hmm. Oh, wow. Hmm. He actually goes for that, huh? Hmm. I think he should have moved this king up first. Hmm. Yeah, I was expecting that. I think we have to let him waste his time with this pawn and cut him off from protecting this side here. Because he basically has to do one, two, three, four, five, like almost six moves to get to this pawn. Yeah, he has to waste way too much time. Gonna be really close, but and I'd like to just trade the queens off whenever I can. There we go. Tactics. Yeah. Woo. That was a that was a really good one. That was that was really good. That was really really fun. <laughs> These are the types of uh rounds that I like where both of us are playing more or less kind of controlled and it just kind of comes down to like a one or two move advantage but it's more fun being on the other side of it on the delivering end not so much the receiving end <laughs> but no he was a he was a really good opponent he, he was really fun to play i played like at 80.7 he played 76 made no blunders yeah he made one blunder at the end there I'm almost certain the blunder is, yeah. This just allowed the skewer, I believe. So let's do the review. Okay, so D4, standard London system stuff here. Um, this is all very unconventional. I've never seen this type of setup before. 
I was considering g3, but then I figured he had h5, and then we were just going to end up in the kind of same scenario. I was really expecting him to take with the uh, dark square bishop here. c3 was okay. Protecting. You found the move that blocks the attacker, sure. Yeah, e4 was protected by the knight. c4. London system, when in doubt, play c4. Hmm. I don't understand pawn c4 here. Yeah, it wouldn't have played out that way. <laughs> yeah, giving him the open h file was. Or, excuse me, h file, a file was a bit of a risk, but. Yeah, taking with the, with the rook here. Interesting. Why, though? Okay. I really regret this. I wonder what the engine says about queen c2 here. It says it's better. Yeah, I wasted some time with uh, rook d1. I was so surprised he didn't take there. Really, I thought this was a good move. There, there's, there's no way. How is this so much better? Oh, right, because I see. Yeah, and yeah, so he basically would have won um, a knight from that exchange. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, this kind of move, bishop d6, that's very hard to find uh, at this level, I feel like. That's like six steps of calculations. Uh, taking the knight was the play here. Okay. I'm glad taking with the pawn was the idea here. Really bad mistake here. I sort of managed to scrape back an advantage here and I kind of threw it away. Yeah. Really rough move there. This was really bad. H2. Yeah. Queen F2 was not the play. Lost a rook out of that for a knight. I basically lost a pawn. And a knight there. He saw um he saw d7, so he protected that. Yeah, had to trade off here, otherwise I was losing a rook. When he set this up, this is when the advantage just swung uh finding this fork was really satisfying. Yeah, this was a really big risk move. Um, rookie won. The only reason why I played it was because his king was just way off in the corner. And my king was just advanced two spots. So I just figured I would have had some kind of advantage racing to the pawns. Well, I guess technically here it goes back to e1. But still, I felt like the king was more centralized than his king. I thought this was a really good move from him, h5. It basically blocked in my king from moving. There was one place where I thought he blundered pretty hard here. Yeah, I personally thought he should have uh, made the king move here so he could bring his king closer to the pawn here. So, like, what does it say about this? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought he would have done. I was really shocked because this allowed me to push his uh, king away, essentially, from these three squares, which were really valuable. Yeah, I figured here because... Um, I was tempted to push this up. But I figured it was just giving him like an extra, uh, saving him two moves.
I don't know why he played f4. Maybe he should have went h4. Yeah, isn't this faster? Isn't h4 faster? Hmm. Anyways. But yeah, I felt like this is where the advantage swung was just on one on this one move here. Yeah. And moving here, I don't know why he went f4. I think honestly he would have had a much better chance. Is it the same? Oh, one, two, three, one, two. Yeah, he basically lost a move there, right? One, two, three versus one, two. Yeah, lost a move there. Yeah, all let's see because I think he would have gotten his uh, queen first, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, he yeah, he would have been one move ahead. So yeah, this uh this king move I think cost him a lot actually. It's really subtle, but it made a really big difference. Yeah, and then I I was basically able to just run his king around. So yeah, really good one. This was a really fun one. Um I wish I uh, could play more like this. This was a really good one. But yeah, Monster Day 1. Appreciate the game, GG. And thanks, guys, for watching.